Welcome back to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt, and today is the second round of Rare Breed versus. Today, it's Rare Breed versus Blue Run Bourbon. Blue Run <laughs> America High Rye Bourbon Whiskey, 111 proof. We'll go in glass A. because it has a butterfly on it. Wild Turkey Rare Breed. America will go in the glass labeled B because the bird has a beak. B for beak. Time to spin the ADHD Whiskey Julie-like Wheel of Confusion so we don't know which bourbon's ass is in which bourbon glass. And we stop. And now we're totally confused. Okie dokie. We're gonna call this glass one and this glass two. Now let me tell you a thing or two about Blue Run. Blue Run is a high rye bourbon. It's 111 proof and it's straight Kentucky bourbon. It's a Jim Rutledge special and it rings in at about 90 to $100 per bottle. There is no age statement, but is rumored to be around four years old. Wild Turkey on the other hand, rumored to be a little bit older. It's 116.8 proof which is barrel strength. It is also a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And guess what? Half the price, between 45 and 55 bucks, depending on where you reside. Spin, 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 spin. Now it's time to find out if a delicate butterfly can butterfly kiss a turkey. Into submission. Glass one knows. Ooh. Okay. A little bit of toffee. A little bit of butterscotch. If you found toffee and butterscotch in a field of beautiful yellow flowers that have the brown inside on them, it's like candy and floral at the same time. Not a lot of ethanol jumping out of the glass, which is nice. Just a sweet, delicate nose on glass number one. Now let's go to glass number two to see how she do. Glass two is striking me as a little bit more rich, a little bit of oak and a little bit of syrup and a little bit of Butterfinger bar. It smells like a lumberjack eating a Butterfinger. As far as the nose goes, they're a little bit different. They're a little bit different and that's okay. But we're not here just to smell these sons of bitches. We're here to taste them, evaluate them, and finally determine which one I prefer. Bitches, glass number one, down the hatch. Ooh, wow, zow. Okay, all right. Glass number one is very nice. Glass number one is very nice. It's like a candied pepper stick. You could say like if you had like if you had rock candy, except for the rock candy was made out of pepper and then you just dunked it in some Kool-Aid, some like cherry Kool-Aid. The pepper was prominent. The pepper was pronounced. The pepper note was placating. The pepper note kind of stuck around in the back of the palate, kind of hung out there, was enjoyable. A nice little spicy bourbon, but don't get me wrong, still a bit sweet up front. A little bit of sweet before the spice, which is always nice, but also no hints of youngness, no hints of immaturity. If any immaturity is into this bourbon, it's because of the backwash that I put into it. Class number two down the hatch. Wow. Yeah. Zowzers. 
Hmm. Yeah. All right. I took a bigger sip of glass number two on accident. But just to clarify, not mad about it. Definitely not mad about it. Glass number two packed a bit more of a punch. It was more distinguished in its ability to be a prominent force entering your mouth. It did some more dance moves on the palate than glass number one. It danced around. It did the funky chicken. It did the Macarena. It dabbed a little bit. It supermaned that hoe. Glass number one is good, but there's a lot more going on in glass number two. Glass two is oilier, it's more complex, and has a wider variety of flavors. There's some fruitiness, some nuttiness, some spiciness, all wrapped up in an oily package. And if you know anything about me, it's that I love an oily package. I like to deliver an oily package, if you know what I mean. And class number two delivers one heck of an oily package. Right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. Interesting. Let's taste class one again. Tasting glass one again after tasting glass two and glass number one is nice. It's sweet, it's easy to sip, but it's kind of one note, not very complex. Glass number one is definitely enjoyable. I do like it a lot, but unfortunately, it's not a match for glass number two tonight. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Glass number two is just on a different level. It's doing things inside my mouth that glass number one can only dream about. With that being said, this bourbon skirmish is over. I'm calling a stop to this bourbon skirmish at three minutes and 18 seconds of round number one, declaring the winner by Gogo Plata, glass number two. And glass number two is B, rare breed wins again. So, the higher priced, younger aged, blue run high rye bourbon was in glass number one. And the rare breed was in glass number two. And that means that rare breed, after two bourbon skirmishes, is up two to zero on the competition. Rare breed, everybody. Congratulations. You silly bird. You tricky turkey. Although the blue run wasn't as complex and not as high powered, for a young bourbon, this is really good. It's sweet, it's spicy, lots of black pepper. The more you drink it, the sweeter it gets. Am I mad at blue run high rye bourbon? No, it's very good. It's a very good bourbon. Do I wish it was a little lower priced? Yeah, I do. But I also wish I could just teleport into the incognito tabs I have open on my cellular device. But that's not happening either. That's just a dream as well. So, this baby at 90 to 100 bucks is a good bourbon, but, but, in my opinion, the rare breed at roughly half the price is a better pour, and I enjoy it more. That's gonna do it for this bourbon skirmish, and that's gonna do it for this episode of Rare Breed Versus. If you haven't checked out the first Rare Breed Versus video, I'll link it right there right up there above my head, where you can watch Rare Breed vs. Booker's. There will be three more of these Rare Breed vs. videos coming this week, so don't you dare take a day off, because I'm not. Also, if you've made it this far, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. It's super free, and I would super love you for it. My name is Matt, this is ADHD Whiskey, and like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on watching your kindergartner be so unathletic and so uncoordinated and so unable to know how uncoordinated and unathletic they are. I love her to death, but her cartwheels, man, they're not good. Those are bad cartwheels. She practices them every day, 600 a day, 600 a day. In the house, outside, don't matter. Wherever she can do a cartwheel, she's doing one. Doctor's office, cemetery, in the back of the van, wherever she can. Her handstand, eh, not, eh, mm -mm. She tried to climb a tree today. She didn't climb it. She did not climb it. But kids are great. 
In all seriousness, watching her do this stuff is so much fun. Watching her mark up my white walls with her dirty hands and feet while she tries to climb them like she's on American Ninja Warrior. Kids are fun. Kids are great. She can't drink out of a bottle of water without choking on it either. Oh boy. I love that kid so much. I love her so much. I suppose I should probably make some phone calls and get her into gymnastics classes or something. Or something. Love.